this is Rabbi Ravane Travis, uh, who is a teacher at Yeshiva Atlanta in Georgia, um, in Atlanta, Georgia. Before he became a teacher, uh, Ruvain spent 15 years as an advertising and marketing executive um, and now teaches at a modern Orthodox high school. Um, and I should also say that Ruvain won, he was chosen this year as the Distinguished Educator of the Year for high school division by the Georgia Commission on the Holocaust for a lesson that he built about the American Civil Rights Movement using some of his own resources and some resources from the Living the Legacy curriculum. So we're really proud of Ruvain for uh, the work that he's done to share our mission and also uh, for the fact that he's been recognized for his work. So um, let me let me just share with you all the, um, the setting. I work in a, a 110 student uh, modern Orthodox high school in Atlanta. Um, the school is about 40 years old. Um, our general studies classes are co-ed. Our Judaic studies classes are taught uh, single gender. Um, I've been using, I went to the um, Teacher Institute last summer. It was fabulous. Any of you who have not yet gone, apply to take advantage of it. It was a dynamic uh, experience. So I've been using JWA materials in two 10th grade American history classes. Um, my classes are very different. The first is an honor section. It's nine students in total, in total seven girls and uh, two boys. It, it's a very female dominated class in that um, the boys are kind of soft spoken and the girls are very outspoken. Uh, my second class is what we call a college prep class. It's a, it's a mixed class, there's 13 students in total. I have some students who are doing extra work so they can receive honors credit. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum, I have students that are on modified curriculum because they have special learning needs. Um, but I've used the JWA material in both. And what I'm going to talk about today, uh, Ed, if you want to go on to the next slide, is um, a feature on the JWA website that I hope you all are familiar with. And if you're not, um, you ought to find it. It's under the features section. It's called This Week in History. Um, this is one of the things I learned about last summer when I was at the Institute. I had a very simple goal in deciding to use it. I wanted to build awareness among my students of the important and impactful influence women have had on the history uh, of our country. I don't use a traditional textbook. I, this is my um, second year teaching uh, American history in the school. Last year I did use a traditional textbook and I find that the way they try and make them PC is they put sidebars and they stick a woman on this page and they put an African American on that page and it doesn't really give the full story. Uh, and if you'd move forward, please. Um, and I decided that I wanted to use this week in history for a very simple reason, uh, and I'll share it with you. I was at the um, Institute of the Z last summer, and I teach American history. I have a political science undergraduate degree. I've got a master's in teaching. I'm certified on the state level to teach history. And last summer was the first time I heard anybody speak about Ella Baker and her con contribution to the civil rights movement. And I was, I was stunned. I was embarrassed. Um, that if I hadn't heard about her, this is ridiculous. And Ruby, um, and for those of us that don't know who Ella Baker is, can you just tell us about her, please? Sure. Ella Baker um, worked for the Southern Christian Leadership uh, Conference in the early 60s. Um, she encouraged the SELC to fund the student seminar in 1960, which led to the um, establishment of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC. Um, she left the SELC to serve as a mentor, as a teacher, not the head, but as a resource for SNCC. SNCC was run by students 19, 20, 21 years old, one of the most influential um, of the organizations in the civil rights movement, and uh, they viewed Ella Baker as their um, godmother. Um, she was very much the mother of, of many, many direct action programs, and she's very significant. And you don't hear about her. But but in fairness, uh, let me say this. The mantra I used in my uh, civil rights unit, Julian Bond in passing, uh, quipped uh, that civil rights instruction is often as follows. Uh, Rosa sat down, Martin stood up, and the white kids from the north came down and saved the day. So not hearing about Ella Baker, there's a lot of people that kids don't hear about in school. Be that as it may, I thought this is uh, unacceptable to me. And I wanted to... 
and I've done used uh, the uh, uh, the JW material a lot in in my class, especially civil rights. But I wanted to go bigger than that. So I wanted to be sure that my students were very aware of the contribution women um, have made and continue to make to history, and you don't get in a typical textbook. Uh, if you go to the next slide, please, then. So if you haven't visited the This Week in History link, what it does is for every day of the week, it gives a summary of some historically significant event uh, that involves a woman for each day of the week. Some go back to the Civil War, some are in 1980s, 1990s. So each week, uh, I had the students in my two um, American history classes go to the JWA website. They have to visit the This Week in History page. They have to scan the five or six or seven events that were listed that week, and every Monday new events uh, are posted to the website. And they have to write a one-paragraph reflection on why he or she thought the particular event to be meaningful or significant, uh, and they have to email it to me every Friday. Uh, Eddie, you can go on, please. Right, so if you go again, please. Um, I'm going to show you in a minute um, just a, a few brief samples, but my students, because of this, um, have a better and deeper appreciation of the role women have played in history. Um, I remember there was um, one uh, um, week, the write-up that most of the kids picked was about a woman in Civil War era Charleston who was arrested uh, as a spy uh, for the Confederacy. And one of the students, um, when they wrote about it, said, wow, I thought back then all women did were, were, were clean and cook and, and have babies. And they were just stunned to see that a woman uh, could get involved, especially a Jewish woman arrested as a, as a spy. So um, this has been important to me. I'll say to you by, um, we've only got about two weeks left this school year. It's become a little rote for them, and I'm, I'm going to rethink whether I'm going to do it all year long. But every one of the students in my class, understand um, that women are important and they need to be discussed uh, when learning history. So, uh, and let me show a couple uh, samples if you go to the next slide. Um, I'm going to read this briefly. This is what someone uh, emailed to me and, and if you speak to Ed, I've been forwarding to these to uh, the folks at JWA all year long. Um, on October 7th, 1984, Madeline Coonan was elected governor of Vermont. And she became the first Jewish and the first female governor of Vermont. She also became the first Jewish woman governor of any American state. She was born in Switzerland and immigrated to the United States as a young child in 1940 because her mother wanted to escape the increasing Nazi threat. She graduated from the University of Massachusetts and Columbia University, and she proceeded to work for uh, the building uh, to free press. Uh, after she got married, married, you can see the typo, I didn't correct them, and had four children, Kunin started to educate her community members about pending health care legislation and a number of communal state issues. I'm going to skip to the bottom here. This one student uh, concluded she should be an example to everyone, especially those who think that their social status, wealth and roots, or even accent is holding them back from becoming as great as they can be. Uh, let's look at another one, please, Adam. Um, this is about the Contemporary Jewish Museum in San Francisco. The, again, a project line visitors watch one of the few uh, Svarot in the world, Julie Seltzer, completed a Torah scroll. Julie is truly an inspiration to me uh, in many different ways. I can relate to her on a personal basis, where I too have a love uh, for writing Hebrew letters. When I was younger, I aspired to uh, one day grow up to be a Svarot, but was not aware that this position uh, was even available to women. Reading about Julie has opened my eyes that modern orthodoxy is taking steps. Uh, allowing women more opportunities. According to strict halakha, women are forbidden from writing the sacred Torah, and if I do so, and if uh, they do so, the Torah uh, should not be used. However, in, in society nowadays, we're adapting the role, uh, adapting to the role of women in society, and new positions are being given to women that were not available before. This demonstrates that with persistence and perseverance, any goal can be accomplished, and that no job is too difficult. Julie has allowed me to see Judaism in a new light and to be able to even strive to pursue a career that I once thought was impossible. Now, I should mention to you um, that JWA is, is far from orthodox in its uh, perspective, and I have students write about things that they say that they respect and admire, even though they wouldn't do. Um, so I don't have a problem being in a modern orthodox school 
um, exposing my students to things that are done differently from the way we do things um, because they ultimately are free to make the choices they need to and want to uh, make in life. Um, let's go to the next one and then, and then we'll just finish up with this last one. I think um, uh, we get the point. Um, December 77, Rosalind Yala, who was born and raised in the Bronx in 1921, became the first American born and American trained woman to receive a Nobel Prize in science. Rosalind invented the radio immunity, which was a technique that allowed scientists to measure, etc., etc., etc. I want to just go to the next page uh, just to see, to show you that, um, um, not that it matters, but a boy wrote, a male student wrote this, and he was very impressed. And so uh, I don't want to leave the impression that, uh, especially in my honors class, which is dominated by female speakers, that I was doing this because I teach mostly girls. I was doing this because I teach students that want to be open-minded and critical thinkers. Um, and it was important that the boys understand that, uh, especially in an orthodox school, that the voices of our women uh, teachers and students are to be honored and heard. And I think in that respect, I was successful. So. Um, it's not a big part of the JWA uh, website, um, and I'd encourage you all to uh, take a look at it, and I'm happy to answer any questions anyone might have.